So there's a fuel tank repair here. Diesel fuel tank, so the customer says, but there was some additives in it. He wants this thing removed right there. And um, there's some diesel fuel in it. There's some old repairs that are no good anymore. I'll show you how to clean all this. And um, we had to actually wash this tank with hot water and Dawn soap, and it was messy. Normally on diesel fuel tanks, you just purge them with some argon and weld. But on this one, we had to go the whole nine yards and wash it all out. But that'll be an interesting video. Stay tuned, and I'll show you how I do it. Go for it. Make sure it's a stainless steel one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So this is my buddy Russell here showing me how to clean aluminum correctly. I mean, if it was a stainless steel brush, it'd be correctly. But um, I'm going to show you how I do it incorrectly and how that works a lot better for me and why. Okay, so now, <laughs> is this really clean? And the answer is no, because the shit is stuck in these valleys and you can't get in these valleys because the brush scoots over the top. Same thing when you use a uh, flap disc or anything else. You have all the still embedded in here. And even if you change directions from all four sides, it's never going to come out. So after you sandblast it, you can see that moon crater thing that's going on here. And if you have a hole, the way how it shows is you'll have like a wet ring around it from the diesel fuel. Now at this point, there's no holes in there just yet. And there's still two areas that need a little bit more work to get some of the shit out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to TIG weld fill these really deep craters to make sure that there is some meat there to hold it to not seep through in the next couple of weeks here. Normally, if this was not just a patch already, then I, if it was gonna be here, I weld them up first and then I put the patch over it afterwards. So now let's look at this again. I mean, deep holes that you didn't even see initially under the under the corrosion layer. This one here is pretty much through. I mean, that's how deep this is. So this needs to be addressed first. The way how this happens is it sits on a rubber strap, salt water in the winter from the road gets in between and has all year 365 days to sit there and just corrode its way through slow and painfully. So you ask yourself why there is rock mount Neptune rod in there again. You know why? Because it works. Like the whole job required like three rods. And I really don't care if you tell me how it costs 40 or 50 bucks a pound. Three rods, it was a $3 investment on this entire job. I mean, it just works so well. It's absolutely worth it. Heavy hitter torch with edge glass on the front. Kind of seen better days, but good enough for aluminum still and the HTP Invertig 251. So here I'm starting to weld on this tank and in between this patch and the original tank there's already a hairline crack. I'm going to show you a picture here in a second where they, what the hairline crack looks like and where I said it was almost gone through as I light up on it it goes through and stuff keeps blowing back at me and whoever used that diesel tank before they either mix some gasoline in with it or use some really nasty anti-gel or something. That stuff was burning pretty hot. Usually on a diesel tank that doesn't happen. So that's when I decided to, after the flame blew up in my face in the next shot, to go ahead and to wash it out like it was supposed to be in the first place. So even purging didn't help. It just was collecting the gases in between the patch and the tank and starting to ignite over and over. Man, see the 
pressure that's coming out of there. Yep. So as you can see now, the tank is minty clean. No algae, no fuel, no nothing in it. So now it's a good time to really weld on this. So I made a patch panel right there out of some 5052 aluminum. I'm going to weld this in. I'm going to weld this in from underneath. So pay attention, see how I do it. All right, now it's time for the fuel gauge here. There's a fairly deep scratch right there. I'm debating if I should fix it or not. Then we're gonna weld these fittings on here. One there and one there. I'm gonna let the customer drill like a quarter inch hole or whatever he wants to do. That way, everything is tight when I ship it. I don't have to line anything up with a specific hole. If there's a problem, I can move the fitting if I had to. So, there we go. Now, a nice touch would be to grind that, clean the mess up. But we'll see if that's necessary or not. So these fittings are for an external, let's say, fuel gauge, level gauge. The customer is going to put a brass 90 in it with some barb fitting and put some clear hose on it. So that way he can see the fuel level. This tank is not going back on a truck. This tank is going to go on a top soil screener. And there is no electric fuel gauge, so he wants these fittings to do an external level gauge on the tank. So... And then later on you see there goes a piece of angle over it to protect that clear level gauge. Maybe larger to protect the, um, the the side glass here. So and of course it was all welded on already. So here you see where the angle is, and you see one of the fittings welded on there. I didn't get any video of the tank finished. Of course, customer picked it up. I never thought of making any videos. So here you see the outside patch. And this one here is the side glass with that angle protector in its entire beauty. And there is another fitting for where we remove that sending unit or whatever you saw in the very first shot. Instead of putting a patch over it, there was a nice round hole under it. I decided to put a half coupling on there so the customer can put a plug in it and use that hole if he needs to. And if not, then he can just plug it up. I felt it was cleaner than just putting a patch over it.